At Balchem Animal Nutrition and Health, we strive every day to deliver results you can see in your animal's productivity and your bottom line. From a smooth transition into the milking string for your fresh cows, to a happy welcome home from your furry friend. From a strong start in your poultry flock, to consistent weight gains for your finishing hogs. We expect to earn your business and your trust with our people, our products, and our science. Our people have an intense passion for your animals and your success. You can count on us for honest, candid advice and practical solutions for your toughest challenges. As the global leader in choline production, chelation, and encapsulation technology, we take our obligation to you and to the environment seriously. Our products are backed by the most extensive and thorough research portfolio, while our business is committed to advancing environmental sustainability and animal welfare. In the end, it all comes down to results. Balchem delivers real results you can count on, results that exceed your expectations, and results that bring true value to your bottom line. Leading the charge to meet the nutritional needs of ruminants, monogastrics, and companion animals, Balchem offers a growing portfolio of nutritional products and a dedication to innovation and industry sustainability. Balchem is here to solve today and shape tomorrow. With today's low milk prices and rising feed protein costs, now is the time to turn up the dial on rumen efficiency. NitroSure Precision Release Nitrogen is designed to help stabilize rumen ammonia pools by synchronizing carbohydrate and nitrogen availability to the microflora. Providing a consistent supply of ammonia is proven to increase rumen microbial populations, improve fiber and dry matter digestibility, and stimulate microbial protein yield, all leading to greater efficiencies in forage utilization and higher milk and milk component production. Maximize rumen microflora with NitroSure to turn up rumen efficiency and productivity. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Science Lecture Series. My name is Scott Sorrell, Director of Global Marketing for Balchem. As the weather begins to warm, now is the time to make plans to mitigate the impact of heat on our cattle during the upcoming summer months. For today's Real Science webinar, we welcome Dr. Israel Flammenbaum from cool, uh, Cow Cooling Solutions. Uh, though the country of Israel's environment would not be considered ideal for dairy cows, Producers in that country have been very successful in managing heat stress, and their productivity per cow ranks among the world's highest. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Uh, Israel Flammenbaum. Dr. Flammenbaum is a world-renowned uh, agriculturalist, bringing over four decades of experience to uh, the field of dairy cattle man management with a specialty in strategic planning of dairy projects in warm clients and emphasis on the relief of heat stress. After a prolific career lecturing all over the globe and publishing numerous papers, six in the journal Dairy Science, he retired from the state of Israel's Ministry of Agriculture in 2008, where he held the position of Director of the Division of Animal Husbandry. He is now a full-time private consultant, fluent in both English and Spanish, and travels extensively to assist government institutions, dairy cooperatives, and private dairy farms all over the world. Israel, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you, Belkem, for inviting me and for you, Scott, uh, personally, for the trust and the, the good rela relations that we established uh, uh, preparing ourselves to this uh, webinar. What will be the topics that I will talk about today? Israel climate and dairy industry. I will present these two. Then I will tell you how we cool cows in Israel and why we chose this method. Then uh, I will describe how we evaluate the effectiveness of cooling treatments we give to the cows. And I will give an example of a successful farm, the Zealim farm, which is located in the south of Israel. And this farm is reaching high production and good fertility in the summer. 
with very, very simple, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, conditions. And I will end my lecture, uh, as I do always with my lectures, with the economics of cooling cows. And in this case, uh, the economics of cooling cows in Israel, is it cost effective to invest co uh, in cooling the cows? So let's start with Israel's topography and climate. Israel is a very small country. I think it's uh, the size of uh, the smallest state of the United States, but it is very, very uh, variable in the topography and the climatic conditions in the summer. From one side, we have the Mediterranean Sea and the coastal plains, which is sea level, uh, during summer very hot and very humid, including nights. And from the other side, we have the Jordan Valley, which is below sea level. The deepest place on health is the Dead Sea you see here uh, with uh, almost uh, 300, uh, 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 let's say 450 or 500 meters below sea level. In the middle, we have the mountains and uh, Jerusalem here and the Golan Heights here with mountains above uh, 1000 meters. So in general, we can say that in the same time, uh, you can ski in the north and you can dive in the south uh, Red Sea. And the temperatures are uh, very high. Uh, they can reach uh, 32, 35 in the coastal uh, uh, part of Israel. And they can reach uh, uh, 50 degrees in the Jordan Valley and the Dead Sea, which is, if I'm not mistaken, 120 Fahrenheit. So it's quite hot in summer in Israel. Uh, to describe how it is related to the uh, dairy cows, I uh, took the opportunity to refer myself to a publication uh, done by uh, Dr. St. Pierre from Ohio State University. And he characterized the different uh, states of United States in hours, THI, hours per year, where THI is above 70, which is the threshold for the cows. So the, I took the two extremes in this, uh, in this uh, publication. Washington state is the coolest state in the United States with only 6% of year time above threshold. And Florida, not surprising, is the uh, warmest uh, state uh, with almost 50% of year time, which is 4,300 hours. And now I went to Israel and Average Israel is 45%. So average Israel is almost like Florida, <clears throat> but we have the range of 35% in the north and the, in the mountains like Jerusalem, but we have 60% of time much above Florida in the Jordan Valley. So it's quite tough to uh, produce milk in summer in Israel. And this is the map of Israel, and you can see that although we have different climatic conditions in Israel, and milk production, every black point is a dairy farm, and milk production in Israel is uh, distributed all over the country, in the coastal part, in the valleys, in the Jordan Valley, in mountains, and up uh, uh, to the desert uh, part of Israel, which is in the south. Let's be familiar with the Israeli dairy sector. We have in Israel 130 uh, milking cows, all of them of the Israeli Holstein breed. Uh, local genetics is uh, mostly 85% of the inseminations are done by local bulls. We have 800 dairy farms, out of them 160, actually 162 are cooperative farms, kibbutz, uh, with uh, 500 to 1,000 cows in a farm, and 640 are fa family farms, something between 50 and 100 cows per farm. 100% artificial insemination. Uh, most of the farms are in compost barn. Climate in Israel allows us to maintain cows in compost barn, which is much, much uh, better for uh, animal welfare. And without uh, any grazing, so zero grazing in Israel, 85% of the cows are represented in the DHIA, which is managed by the Israeli Cattle Breeders Association. And average milk production yield in 2021 for the uh, cooperative farms was 12,300 kilograms, which is 27,000 pounds per cow per year with 39% fertilizer. 
fat and 3-4% uh, uh, protein. So it's quite high production. How we know it? Because when we compare ourselves with other countries, we can see this is a publication of ICA, the World Genetics uh, Institution. Uh, we see that Israel is leading with uh, uh, an average of 12,000 kilograms per cow per year. Uh, after we, uh, United States with uh, uh, 10,000, almost 2,000 uh, uh, kilograms per cow per year less. Uh, this is the average. Uh, Denmark is almost the same. And from the other side, we have a grazing uh, country like uh, New Zealand, where cows are in a different uh, system. They each, uh, uh, you know, three cows in New Zealand produce the amount of milk that one cow in Israel. So we are reaching very high production, uh, although we are uh, in a very warm and dif difficult uh, conditions. Uh, improving feed efficiency is the main economic factor which influences farm profitability when we are dealing with mitig mitigating heat stress from the cows. And we have two uh, uh, effects that are additional one to another. They don't come one instead of another, the short and the long term effect. The short term effect is the direct effect of heat stress on cows on a daily or summer daily production. This is a, a figure taken from a, a, a publication from Kansas State University, where we can see that when temperature is 22, which is something around 65 uh, Fahrenheit, cows will produce 1.4 kilograms of milk for every kilogram of dry matter consumed. But when temperature goes to 32, which is almost uh, 90 Fahrenheit, then uh, uh, the feed efficiency will drop to 1.2. So if we uh, uh, relate one to another, we see a 15% uh, uh, reduction in feed efficiency. This, uh, this reduction is because cows are spending 15% of the energy consumed in the feed in order to activate body mechanisms, which are not successful, but they uh, the, the food is lost. If we go to the long term, it is the increase in milk production. And here I want to show you results from a survey we realized in Israel in 40 Israeli dairy farms along 20 years where uh, uh, we could uh, analyze the feed efficiency of cows between 9,000 and 15,000 kg per cow per year. And what we can see is very clear. If these cows produce 10,000 uh, uh, kilograms per cow per year, this is more or less the, the, the production of the lowest producing dairy farms today in Israel. Uh, the feed efficiency will be 0.78 kilograms of dry matter per uh, kilogram of milk. But if we go to 12,000, which is the average today, and let's say that these 2,000 were reached by cooling the cows, then uh, the efficiency we, uh, will be 0.70. So again, we have 10% increase in feed efficiency, which is uh, a, a, in addition to the improvement we have seen here. So together we can say that if we cool cows, we can reach uh, up, up to 25% more feed efficiency. Try to imagine you produce the same amount of milk with 25% feed less. It's a lot of money, we will see it later on. So uh, means for heat, heat stress mitigation, usually uh, the first thing is to prevent cows from direct and indirect solar radiation. This is not cooling the cows, but this, this is pre preventing the cows from entering into heat stress. Then we have the direct cooling system by uh, wetting for ventilation and um, most common is combination of wetting and false ventilation. And there, there is another way to cool the cows indirectly by cooling the environment, uh, fogging or uh, evaporative pets. In Israel, we, uh, uh, we decided to go for prevention of direct and indirect solar radiation. Most of the cows in Israel are shaded during all day uh, 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 in the summer and uh, in cooling the cows by a combination of wetting and false ventilation. The reason is it is uh, easier to handle, it is cheaper, 
And the high humidity we have in great part of the dairy farms in Israel do not allow us to use uh, ev evaporation of water in order to cool cows. So this, uh, this is the main reason why we decided to go for the rate cooling uh, of the cows. Where we, do we cool the cows? Waiting yard before and between milking sessions. Special cooling yards between milking sessions, mostly in large scale farms where we cannot bring the cows to the waiting yard between milking sessions. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, we started doing it in very large dairy farms in Israel. I do it in many other, other farms in the, in the world, like in Mexico, like in Italy, uh, where we have uh, uh, farms with thousands of cows. Then we can cool the cow or we cool the cows in the feed line after and between milking sessions. And we used to ventilate, force ventilate the resting area, mostly the compost uh, barns. Uh, uh, with a large scale uh, fans uh, without water, of course. And this uh, serves us in order to dry the bedding and in the same time to blow air over the cows and help them somehow. This is a typical uh, waiting yard, uh, uh, two meters diameter fans and sprinklers, and they operate uh, before and uh, between milking sessions. And this is the feed line with the uh, uh, fans and sprinklers. Now you see the sprinklers in operation. This is, a, this is a, a figure that was taken from my first publication in the Journal of Dairy Science in 1986. Uh, and this is a part of my PhD where we uh, uh, evaluate, uh, first of all, we defined the way to cool the cows by a combination of wetting and false ventilation. And uh, in this, uh, in this uh, graphic, we can see that we cooled the cows at that time that were cows with 25 kilograms per, per day production. Uh, and uh, these cows were cooled four times per day. You can see these uh, four treatments uh, almost every six hours. And this was uh, sufficient to maintain, uh, allow cows maintain normal body temperature. This is the cooled group, and this is the borderline of 39 degrees. Uh, while uh, uh, the uh, control uh, cows were hypothermic most of the day. So uh, uh, we can see that 25 uh, degrees, uh, uh, 25 kilograms can be reached by uh, cooling the cows every six hours. We know that as temperature, as milk production is increasing, cows are uh, generating obviously most heat, more heat. So we uh, compared the, uh, let's say the uh, tendency of uh, increasing body temperature after a cooling session in cows with 25 uh, kilograms per day, as we've seen before, to cows producing 45 kilograms per day, which is the black line. And we can see that if uh, cows uh, with 25 kilograms per day uh, can uh, maintain six hours before they, they heat, they are heated, uh, when, when uh, uh, production is high, we need much shorter time in order to give the next, next cooling treatment. And in order to confirm it, I want to show you uh, some information from a research published in 2012 by uh, an Israeli uh, research uh, team from the Volcani Center, the Minister of Agriculture. And they compared uh, five and eight cooling sessions of 45 minutes each uh, in, in, in uh, the experimental station uh, in the central part of Israel, the coastal part of Israel. And let's see the results. First of all, we can see that uh, uh, cows in five cooling treatments were cooled for a cumulative uh, time of 20, 225 minutes and the eight treatments, 360, which is six hours. Total laying uh, down time was longer, even though the, the, the eight treatments cows were uh, obliged to be standing more time, they laid down more time and they were standing less time than the other group. If we go to rumination, uh, uh, cows uh, cooled more intensively, ruminated more time. The body temperature, the respiration rate afternoon was 50 uh, breaths per minute uh, as compared to 83 in the other group. 
and body temperature was below 39, 38, 20, uh, as compared to 39.30, which is hyperthermia in the five uh, treatments. And if we go to the results, we can see that the cows that were uh, cooled more intensively consumed more feed. They produced almost 3.5 kilograms more and uh, somatic cell count was much lower, which showed uh, or confirmed what we have seen before that these cows were much less stressed, if any, as compared to the five uh, treatments group. So uh, if we summarize all this information, we can uh, um, understand how we defined and recommend the common cooling protocol for the Israeli dairy farms, which is working also very well in other parts of the world. Forced ventilation, we uh, require a wind speed of three meters per second. We provide cows uh, cycles of 30 to 60 seconds wetting. It depends on the uh, sprinkler uh, type every five minutes and fans are uh, operating continuously. Cooling sessions of 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, uh, we give the cows six cumulative hours of cooling per day, which is uh, based on the uh, results of the uh, research I showed before. Uh, uh, so we cool the cows almost every uh, four hours, uh, day and night. Uh, dry, we cool, of course, also dry cows, and but they are cooled less intensively, four to six cooling sessions of 30 minutes each. Okay, now we cool the cows. How we evaluate the effectiveness of cooling treatment we are providing to the cows. So I want to share with you uh, two experiences we have. One uh, is the evaluation in long term, which is the summer to winter ratio index that we developed in Israel and which was adopted recently by US uh, institutions and Italian institutions and the short term by monitoring cows vaginal temperature using uh, intravaginal data logger. So let's go to the summer to winter ratio index. Uh, we developed it in collaboration with the Israeli Cattle Breeders Association. And we compare cows uh, productive and reproductive parameters between summer, which is July to September and winter, January, March. So a ratio of uh, close to one means that farms are successful in cooling the cows in the summer. And the ratio below 0.9 means that farms are failing to cool the cows in the summer. So we classify uh, every, at the end of uh, every year, all the farms in Israel, and we can see who are the good ones and who are the failing ones. And uh, I got uh, the, 2021 numbers a, a few weeks ago, and they, they are included in my presentation today. So if we go, I choose 10 successful farms and the 10, uh, the 10 most failing farms. And in the middle is the average of all the 162 cooperative farms. So if we go to winter milk production, we see that there is no much difference between uh, uh, the different groups. They are all uh, close to 40 kilograms per cow per day. But if we go to the summer, we see that uh, uh, the cows, which I uh, consider successful farms, they have a summer to winter ratio of, uh, of 0.99. They, they, they lose only five, 400 uh, uh, milligrams of milk from winter to summer, while uh, the failing farms to cool the cows, they are 0.88, below 0.9, and they drop almost five kilograms in an average in the summer. Uh, if we can take the same groups of uh, farms and we uh, check the fertility, also winter fertility is almost the same, 42, 43 uh, percent of conception rate. But when we come to the summer, the successful farms fail only 10 percentage units, uh, 11, and the uh, failing farms uh, drop almost three times the, the uh, percent points like uh, in comparison to the su successful ones. So you, you can see that we have a very good tool to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, our cooling system at the end of every summer. 
but uh, uh, and if we uh, graphic these uh, these numbers, it is very interesting to see. I took uh, uh, from these ten and ten successful and failing farms and draw uh, the lactation curve of cows calving in the beginning of the summer and cows uh, uh, calving in in the winter. Let's go to the summer. We can see that those cows that are uh, successful in cooling the cows, they reach. This is the pink uh, uh, color. They reach higher peak lactation, almost five kilograms difference. But what is interesting is that even when summer ends, these cows keep on producing more milk until drying off. And uh, this is an additional, uh, additional milk that is produced, let's say free of charge because we, we don't spend in cooling the cows here. But this is the persistency. If we go to the, those calving in winter, obviously there is no reason, and we saw it before, that uh, there will be a, a difference in the peak lactation because this is winter. But when summer comes, these cows persist better than the others. So how much more milk uh, produce the uh, successful uh, uh, in front of uh, the failing uh, farms? Uh, uh, well, before I show it, uh, this is, a, this is a, a figure from a lecture uh, given by uh, Albert de Vries from Gainesville, uh, Florida, in, a, in an event we uh, had in Israel. Again, we have the successful and the failing farms, and we have the red first lactation, green second, and three and more. And we can see that lactation, annual lactation curve uh, is much higher uh, in the uh, cows that are uh, successful in cooling the cows in, in all lactation, the first, second, and three and more. So how much milk in total is the difference? In 2008, when we did first the, the, the comparison, we found that the difference between successful and failing was 720 kilograms, which is 6.5%. Now I took the same uh, successful and failing farms in 2021. Uh, obviously, the, the milk production is much higher, but not only uh, much higher, the difference now, it's not uh, 720, it's 1,000 kilograms of milk and it's 8.3% uh, of, uh, of uh, increase. So we can understand that as higher as is milk production, more effective is proper cooling. And uh, just the title of an article published uh, two years ago uh, in the Journal of Dairy Science uh, were um, some universities in the United States uh, adopted uh, our uh, methodology of summer to winter ratio and uh, uh, tested it in different parts of the United States. I will not uh, go uh, because of limit of time uh, into the results, but if you uh, uh, search this, um, this uh, article in the Journal of Dairy Science, you can see uh, what, uh, what is the summer to winter ratio in, in the north and in the south of United States. Now let's go to the short-term uh, um, evaluation of the effectiveness. We want to know in real time how uh, our, our cooling system is doing. So we use uh, data loggers. It's a small, uh, smaller than a, a, a 10 cents coin in Israel. We program it in the computer to uh, monitor and record the temperature every 10, 15 minutes. Then we uh, put it in a cedar we uh, uh, insert it in, into the vagina of the cow, and we pull it out after uh, one, two, or three days, uh, download the information, and draw the graphic of the body temperature of the cows. Uh, a research group in Israel, from again, from the Volcani Center Ministry of Agriculture, did a, a, a research uh, in, uh, and this was published in Jerusalem conference in 2018. They ran a survey with 10, 12 dairy farms, uh, 36 uh, cows monitored per farm. And then they calculated the, uh, uh, let's say the average time cows are spending above 39.2 centigrade. And we see uh, I, they classified it into three groups. Let's say the better cooled cows, the middle class, and the, those cows that are, let's call them failing farms. 
we see a difference. Here we have four hours above uh, threshold during the day, six hours, and uh, more than nine hours. And if we go to the uh, results in fertility and in milk production, we see that those cows that maintain a, a body temperature below 39.2 for longer time during the day have much better conception rate than those cows that are failing to do it or spend more time, nine hours above this threshold. If we go to summer to winter ratio as expected, the summer to winter ratio is 0.96. It is not like the, let's say the most successful farms in Israel, but uh, it's quite uh, uh, different from the 0.90 for the, those farms that uh, their cows are spending more time uh, with the vaginal temperature above uh, 39.2, that here we decide this as a threshold. Let's be uh, familiar with a very unique and, uh, and special dairy farm in the south of Israel called Zelim Dairy Farm. It's a kibbutz and it's located in the warm south of Israel. And this farm is highly successful in cooling the cows in the summer. Well, this is the map of Israel again. And uh, here is Tel Aviv, here is Jerusalem, and here is the Lim farm in the south. It's a middle of the desert, very, very warm uh, uh, in, in the summer. Uh, the Lim farm have 350 Israeli Holstein cows. Uh, Cows are milked three times a day, uh, and each milking session lasts for four hours. So they can bring cows between milking sessions also to the uh, waiting yard to be cooled. Uh, uh, the farm, uh, 305 days production in, in uh, 2021, uh, take, taken again from the uh, Israel Cattle Breeders Association milk recording system. So milk yield was 14,600, which is 32,500 uh, pounds. Uh, economic corrected milk was higher because they have uh, fat and protein above the standard. It's above 15,033,500 th pounds. Fat, uh, 385 and protein, 345 uh, with less than 200,000 uh, uh, somatic cells uh, in the milk. So it's a quite impressive uh, level of production of this farm. Let's see how they do in summer. These are the farm bounds, uh, big uh, compost bounds. You can see around it's just a desert, a very, very yellow desert. Uh, okay, what is the summer management in this uh, Zerlim dairy farm? First of all, walkways are shaded using plastic nets. Uh, water troughs are located inside the barn, in walkways, in the waiting or cooling yards, and in total cows have more than 30 centimeters of space per uh, water trough per cow, which is more than double uh, of the recommendation. Then waiting and cooling yards are uh, 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 they have a space of two square meters per cow which allow the cows to, to have sufficient space and uh, do not need to be crowded. And then the effectiveness of cooling treatment is much, much better. Feed is distributed in summer three times per day and is pushed every hour 24 seven. So cows have a, a fresh food in front of them 24 seven. The cows are cooled in the waiting and cooling yards before each milking session a, with a total of three cumulative hours. Then they are brought uh, uh, three times more to be cooled between milking sessions. So it's three hours again. And here we come to the six cumulative hours like the experiment of the Volcani Center I showed before. But uh, in, in addition to that, uh, they have a special cooling system in, in the feed line where every fan and uh, is misters in front of it can be activated by a sensor when a cow is crossing the line and entering to the feed. So we have six cumulative hours uh, for sure. And then every cow uh, uh, approaching to the, to the feed line going to eat, she, uh, she, is, cooling, uh, she is cooled in addition. 
So these are the uh, walkways. You see the water trough uh, in the arrows, uh, white arrows here, and the shaded plastic net. These are the feed lines. You see the, the line of, of, of small fans that are in, in, in front of each one of them, there are four misters, and each one of these fans is activated separately when a cow uh, cross the line of the sensor and uh, uh, start activating the cooling. Now we go to the uh, screen of the computer in the office of this farm. Uh, the Zelim farm used to monitor a vaginal temperature of the cows very frequently along the, uh, along the summer. They monitor uh, a sample of cows in every, in every group. And you, you can see a, a, an example of, of one of the groups. You see the red, the red line, which is the 39. And uh, you can see that uh, this, this group cows are below 39 almost the entire day. So they are even better than the, the good group in the experiment I showed before. And this can explain the results. I, uh, I want to show you the uh, numbers of 2021 summer to winter ratio in Zelim farm and compare it to the uh, 162 uh, cooperative farms in Israel. And you can see uh, the difference. Uh, average summer milk production is almost uh, 50 kilograms. It's 107 pounds compared to 38.3, which is 84 pounds in, in, the, uh, in the average dairy farms. Summer to winter ratio is 0 0.99. It's, it's, it's uh, losing only 1% of milk production as compared to 0.94. Peak lactation is also very close in the summer to the winter. Somatic cell count, differently from, from the rest of the farms, where summer, uh, summer uh, somatic cell count is higher because cows are stressed. In the Elim farm, it's below one, which means that oh, it's another confirmation to the fact that these cows are not in stress at all. And fertility uh, completes this confirmation. You can see uh, the uh, conception rate in summer drops only in three percentage units, and it is much higher, 15 percentage units higher than the average Israeli farms. So no doubt that uh, it's, it's the moment to salute to the Lim farm uh, uh, staff and management. This farm is managed by two ladies, very lovely ladies, and uh, which are very cooperative. And this is the moment to thank them for all the cooperation we are doing to, uh, to start and learn what is the potential of these cows. So uh, here I come to the end of my uh, lecture uh, with the last uh, part, which is the economics of cooling. How we calculate the uh, effectiveness of investing in the implementation of cow cooling system I give you here the case of Israel because this is the, my lecture, but I run these uh, studies with this program I will show you uh, uh, later on uh, in many, many other countries of the world. And, uh, and not surprisingly, the results are the same, which I will summarize uh, at the end of my lecture. This is a program I uh, developed uh, almost uh, 15 years ago uh, with the, uh, economy, uh, the economist of the Israeli Dairy Board and uh, the idea was to uh, be able uh, with the, this Excel spreadsheet to evaluate the effectiveness of the treatments we are providing to our cows. So let's go over this, uh, this uh, spreadsheet and uh, understand what, what it contains. First of all, the uh, uh, red circles we have to put in this program the level of production of uh, annual production of these cows before they start being cooled, which is 10,000 kilograms, number of cows in the earth, and uh, number of days, uh, or summer days we call it, where cows are supposed to suffer from heat stress. I put here 120, which is a typical uh, Israeli dairy farm with four months, four, four months uh, of uh, summer. Per, uh, per year. Next step is the investment, 
we need to do in order to cool the cows. So we have the, uh, the uh, let's say, initial investment, which is uh, uh, equipment like fans, sprinklers, uh, control boxes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so it's uh, I, I've put here numbers of Israeli numbers, but uh, translated into uh, U.S. dollars. So it will be 500 US dollars per cow uh, initial investment. It's I exaggerate it, but I prefer to be on the safe side. Usually it's it's less than that. And then uh, it costs 50 US dollars per cow to operate the cooling system, uh, which is electricity, water, labor, etc. After we fill these uh, numbers, we go to the third step. And the third step is putting prices. Uh, the cost of one kilogram of dry matter in Israel is approximately 40 US cents. And the price milk to the farm, farm gate uh, milk, uh, milk price is uh, 65 cents. It's quite high if, high if I compare it to United States or to Europe. And then uh, after we fill all these, we go to the assumptions. Here I can assume the increase in uh, milk production and the increase in uh, feed efficiency uh, two factors that, as you remember from the beginning of my lecture, are uh, much influential on the uh, on the uh, cost uh, on the uh, let's say income of the cows in the summer when uh, executing a cooling system. And when we put this assumption, we go to the results, and the results are presented in a in black circle. If we are under these conditions. Uh, we will increase our profit per cow by 160 US dollars uh, uh, per, uh, per year. And for a 500 cows farm, it will be 80,000 US dollars. Now I, I took this uh, calculation and I uh, summarized it in three, uh, let's say, uh, scenarios. Uh, let's start with the first, first scenario. I visit a new farm or I, I'm, I'm building a new farm, or I visit a farm without any cooling. So I uh, uh, recommend him, and we invest in equipment, those 500 US dollars, and in proper operation, which are the 80, uh, 50 US dollars. And then I ran two scenarios, 5% increase in production and annual production, and 10% uh, increase in annual production, which is more realistic, this 10%, and 5% in feed efficiency even though I've seen that, I've shown that uh, it is much higher uh, in my lecture. But if we uh, go to a new farm or a farm without any cooling and we establish all the system, we have a, a, an increase or an income per cow of 400 US dollars per year. Now remember the total uh, investment for equipment is 500 US dollars. So it means that uh, uh, in, uh, in a, a little bit more than one year, I can pay back the investment. Now let's go to another uh, um, scenario, which is more common, an existing farm. He already has the equipment, but he is not uh, uh, using it or do not using it properly. Uh, after my recommendations, he is getting the results, and I analyze it again uh, with 5 and 10% increase in milk production. Here, the results are much better because we don't have, we save the 500 US dollars of equipment. So, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is much better. But the uh, third scenario, uh, which unfortunately exists uh, in, 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 still exists in farms in Israel and in many, many farms around the globe is those farms that are investing in equipment and operation of the system, but, but, but because of lack of knowledge, they don't uh, uh, use good uh, equipment. They don't reach the uh, uh, desire, the wind speed. They don't wet the cows properly. They don't bring the cows sufficient time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They don't reach the results. So they spend the money and don't reach the results. And these farms, uh, uh, they are in red. They lose 85 uh, US dollars per cow per year. So if you are not sure you are going to cool your cows properly by uh, uh, properly uh, install and operate the system, 
better do nothing because otherwise you are going to lose money. And this shows to you how, how much important is the my profession, which is the consultancy on how to install and properly operate the cooling system. So in conclusion, the Israeli experience teach us that proper installation and operation of cooling system can eliminate completely the summer decline in milk production and significantly reduce the summer decline in cow's fertility. Uh, these results can be reached also in extremely warm climate conditions and with cows of very high production potential as we have seen in the Elim farm lately. Investing in cow cooling is one of the most profitable investment a farmer can, be, can do. But, and this is a big but, with the condition that cooling system is, in, is installed and operated properly. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, here you have my uh, email address and my website, and uh, I am ready to have your questions. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Flemenbaum. Uh, before we get started answering questions, we'd like to share a brief video, and then we'll be right back to answer the questions submitted during today's presentation. Every expectant mother knows that what she eats impacts her baby. And now research shows that is also true for our cows. Maternal consumption of Reassure during late gestation had a positive effect on the in utero calf, setting her up for better health and potentially even higher milk production once she joins the milking string. Learn more at balchemanh.com slash launch and launch your herd for life. All right, as a reminder, you can still submit questions through the Q&A tab at the top of your screen. Uh, Israel, your first question is related to humidity in, in Israel, and uh, I think you touched on that a bit, but just how humid um, is it during the summer months? Well, in the, in the coastal part and the, and the internal valleys, uh, humidity is very high. Uh, it, it can range from 50 to 60 percent during midday uh, uh, till um, 80 uh, to 95 during nighttime. I live in Tel Aviv and in uh, August, September, uh, humidity at night and in midnight is always above 30, 85 uh, percent. With uh, with 26 or 27 centigrade. All right, thank you. Next question has to do with feed additives, comes in from Michael. What do you re recommend in terms of feed additives in the diet to combat heat stress? Do you increase the levels of C18, C16 fats in the diets? Well, uh, uh, nutrition is not my strong, uh, strongest part. I, I, I prefer not to enter to, to this uh, topic. Uh, there are better, better experts in Israel that can uh, answer to this question. Understand completely, and I'll just put a little ad in real quick. We're going to be recording a, uh, a podcast, and we'll have Dr. Lance Baumgard uh, on there. And so uh, we'll we'll address nutrition during the podcast. So I'd invite you to uh, to join in on that when it drops. Um, next um, question comes in from Pete. In a herd that has a ratio that falls in the alarm range, so less than uh, 0.9, uh, what would be the uh, the the steps to troubleshoot the problem? Well, uh, the steps uh, are to uh, analyze uh, uh, the, his uh, cooling uh, system and cooling protocol. See that uh, he have the uh, uh, necessary equipment uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, wind speed, uh, wetting quality, et cetera, et cetera. And after uh, uh, we are uh, uh, sure that uh, uh, these these are completed, we go for the protocol. How many how many hours per day and how frequently uh, is cooling the cows, uh, and then give the recommendations for proper operation, uh, put the system uh, in operation, and then follow up uh, the results uh, in the way that I uh, described in my lecture. All right. Thank you. 
Next question comes in from Haley. How does conservation of natural resources, in particular water, factor into the cooling systems? Is that a high priority in Israel as it is in the United States? Well, uh, look, uh, there is something very interesting that uh, I learned uh, during my, my PhD uh, researches. Uh, when time when summer comes, uh, cows will need more more water. Whatever you will do, if you don't cool the cows, they will drink almost uh, almost uh, uh, one hundred liters more, and they will urinate and evaporate it. If you cool the cows, uh, you save these one hundred liters and you spray it on the cows. So uh, in any one of these cases, you will use the same amount of water. Doing it by cooling is much more effective and efficient than you doing it by uh, giving the cows to drink it, because if they drink it, they will not be cooled. If you spray it on the cows, they will be cooled. So even though we are a short in Israel, we were short in Israel uh, in the past with water. Now we have plenty of water because we desalinize water from the Mediterranean. So there is no shortage of water in Israel, even though uh, we are trying to, to, to save water wherever uh, it is possible. In the case of cooling the cows, it is not needed because uh, we are more effective by spraying the cows. All right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> next question comes in from Bruce. From your picture, it's, uh, uh, it seems like the Israeli barn roofs are very flat. Is that beneficial for heat mitigation there? Well, the, the Israeli roofs are very high uh, and very uh, well. Uh, they, are, they, are, they have the, the slope of, uh, I think, uh, 40 40 percent. Uh, the fact that they are very high and they are painted white uh, from outside, they reflect a lot of, uh, of, of uh, radiation. Uh, uh, the, the, the slope is not very important. OK. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Glenn is asking, the index is pretty tight. Do you think it is uh, sensitive enough to pick out differences in herds, particularly in herds that experience periodic bouts of heat stress? I'm, I'm not sure that I understood the question. Can you repeat? Um, he says that the index is pretty tight. Um, and and so do you think it's sensitive enough, uh, enough to pick out differences in herds particularly in herds that experience periodic bouts of heat stress. So I guess um, on and off when it gets hot and then when it goes uh -huh. down. Yeah, well, uh, look, uh, the, the numbers I, I showed you here are uh, numbers, uh, Israeli numbers. If you will go to the article, uh, the uh, U.S. article that I showed you, you will see a much uh, a bigger range between farms. For example, in the south of the United States, there are, uh, there are many farms below 0.85. If you go to other countries which are less developed than the United States, you will find ratios of 0.75 and 0.70. So this range is, is relatively narrow in Israel because the, the, the dairy farms in Israel are relatively very much advanced in, in cow cooling. And the, what the difference we are describing is between the, I, I would say the good ones and the less good ones, but not the, the good ones and the bad ones. So this range can be much wider in, 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 in extreme conditions. Uh, if it is about periodic uh, heat waves, I, 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 cannot, uh, I cannot tell you very much because most of my experience is in, 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 in projects, in, 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 in conditions where summer uh, is very constant, warm and constant. Recently, I started working uh, in, in European countries, and it, there uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit more complicated, as you said. Mm -hmm. Very well. Your next uh, question and comment comes in from Linda. Linda says, fantastic presentation and that she's been a fan of yours for many years. Um, she's working in emerging countries with very basic dairy industries. So, and, and she qualifies that as um, small herds, you know, one to five cows. Um, and what practical measures can you recommend for mitig mitigating heat stress for those uh, smaller herds in emerging countries? You know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, it, when it comes to cooling the cows, uh, you, you, you double, you, 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 calculate uh, in multiples of cows. 
Uh, it's the same system for five cows fa uh, uh, herd or 5,000 cows herd. We need, we need a, fa a fan for every, let's say, eight uh, or nine cows and uh, two sprinklers, etc. And, and I, I was involved in projects in India where, where uh, uh, um, uh, these kind of farms are, are, are the, the, let's say, the reality. So, so use one, one fan and two sprinklers and give them the same treatment that you give to 5,000 cows. Right. Just, in case, just in case, sorry, just in case you are dealing with intensive uh, milk uh, production cows. Uh, uh, yes, uh, if, if you are uh, with the uh, cows of European breed with a high potential and good feeding, etc., so these cows can respond. If you are using uh, boss indicus or crosses and these cows cannot respond at all, so uh, all the management will be different. Mm -hmm. All right, very well, thank you. Next question comes in from Rick. Um, how was lying time affected on the Zelum dairy when the cows spent three hours prior to milking in a waiting cooling yard, assuming this was in addition to time in the parlor? No, no. The three hours, the three hours is is not uh, uh, in one time. The three hours is it's three cumulative hours, for uh, one hour before every milking session. It, this is more or less the time that cows are waiting in the in the in the waiting yard to be cooled because okay. the waiting yard in the Elim farm is divided into three sections. So cows are entering to the first section and start being cooled, and then move to the second section and then to the third section with the which is the entrance to the milking parlor so in total every cow spends one hour before every milking session and one hour uh, between every milking session and this is how we uh, we gather these six cumulative hours a day all right very well thanks for clarifying that uh, roberta is asking is there any specific advice on how to properly cool barns with automatic milking systems well, I, I'm doing it. Uh, I, I did a big project with De Laval in Spain uh, for for uh, for VMS. Uh, they call it AMS. I have a very uh, big, uh, uh, almost 1,000 cows uh, 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 Italian dairy farm with Lely uh, robots, and uh, we cool the cows the, uh, uh, by uh, putting uh, uh, sensors, detection sensors, as I showed in the Lim farm. In the uh, first of all, we we provide the cows a, a much a, a much wider space before the robots, because a cows sometimes come just to be cooled, and we don't want them to block the entrance to the robot to the to the cows that needs to be cooled, um, needs to be milked, and then also in the uh, in the feed line we uh, we divide the feed line into sections with sensors and. Uh, the, these uh, sensors activate fans, uh, let's say one third of the of the feed line, uh, 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 and uh, when cows are entering to the to the this uh, this line, they activate the cooling system. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more complicated to cool cows in a in a robotic dairy farm because you don't have uh, the scheduled time of uh, feeding and and milking. But to, we did it, and and, and in both uh, the experiment in uh, in Spain and the, and the, the, my experience in Italy, uh, and also in Argentina, uh, it shows that uh, we we succeed the, the, well. The results, the summer to winter ratio and the conception rates, uh, the results show that uh, it works. So we can cool pr properly also cows in robotic system. All right, thank you. Our next question comes in from. I believe it's Muj. Uh, my apologies if I've mispronounced that, but the question is, could uh, heat stress be tackled with equipment and management or will genetics be the golden key for the future? So I think the question is more about what role will genetics play in uh, helping us mitigate heat stress in the future? Well, I, I don't believe that uh, we will be able to, to uh, uh, find uh, or, or, or select genetically uh, uh, to such far, uh, cows that uh, are, are uh, totally tolerate to heat. There are some, uh, there are some uh, genes that are uh, today uh, uh, known uh, as, as uh, genes that can allow cows to tolerate better heat. heat. The problem is that the cows are generating so much heat 
that it is much, much above uh, uh, genetics to overcome it. It's a uh, uh, cows gen uh, uh, um, generate uh, between 2,500 and 3,000 watts of heat when uh, naturally they can, they can dissipate uh, um, less than one third. So unless we are talking about uh, a genetic uh, modifying something science fiction that I don't come to my mind, uh, genetic will, will not help us. We will have to keep on cooling cows for, for a long time from now. All right, very well. Um, we are at the top of the hour, uh, Israel. Um, do you have a few more moments? We've got quite a few questions left. Uh, no you have time to answer a few more. All right, very well. Next one comes in from Stefano. On top of milk lost and worst fertility rates, which are the other negative effects in long term due to heat stress? Is there any evidence that this can influence culling rate or average number of lactations per cow? Of course, of course. When, when, uh, if if you if you uh, lose fertility, uh, you. And, and, and unfortunately, a, a higher percentage of uh, high potential cows in the herd are those who are suffering because they produce a lot of milk, they produce a lot of heat. They are most, more uh, suffering more from heat stress and they have a, a higher chance to be cold. So uh, we are going back uh, with the genetic improvement because of low fertility. Uh, we uh, low fertility will increase uh, uh, the average days in milk, and we, this will uh, reduce uh, average milk production. Um, health problems. Uh, I didn't mention in my lecture, but uh, you know that uh, uh, heat stressed cows are uh, well; uh, they are much uh, much more uh, uh, suffering from more infections other infection and and uh, and um, uh, uterine infections uh, in 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 dairy farms that we implemented a, a intensive and a properly operated cooling system in Italy for example we reduced significantly the uh, expenditure for medicines so these are these are factors that uh, can be accumulated. I would say that uh, if if my, in my calculation I used only the improvement in feed uh, feed efficiency short and long term, uh, if I will add uh, fertility and health uh, to the equation, I think that uh, profitability will increase in somewhere between thirty to forty percent above uh, what I present. All right. Thank you. Next question comes from Allah. He says he is from the uh, UAE and they started using the smart soaker system. And he would like to know, do we need to also uh, airflow more than five cubic meters per hour? Well, uh, I've been to the UAE uh, two months ago. Uh, I really enjoyed the visit. Uh, it's a it's very tough uh, climate there. Uh, I, I'm not uh, very much uh, familiar with the, the, uh, the, let's say, the exact numbers of, of this kind of cooling, the, which is the, the indirect cooling system. So I, uh, I, I think that uh, I cannot answer directly to this question. I would say that uh, uh, under the conditions of the UA, which is a very dry climate, uh, this indirect cooling system can be uh, can uh, we have to consider it uh, and see uh, uh, the, the cost effectiveness and the pro and cons of this system implementing. If Allah wants to contact me directly, she have uh, my my uh, email address here, and we can we can discuss this this uh, this matter uh, specifically for their hair condition. All right, very well. Um, Dr. Rodriguez is uh, asking, says um, Armstrong and Smith prioritize the holding pen as a place to do the cooling or cooling. If you are limited, if you have limited dollars, would you do cool? Would you do cooling in the, in the waiting or cooling yard first? If not, where would you start with cooling? No, I agree with uh, with Armstrong and uh, uh, Smith. Uh, Smith passed away a few years ago. I had a uh, the chance to be with him in Brazil, uh, to spend a nice time together in Brazil uh, shortly before he passed away. Both of them are right. Uh, if, I, if I am short in money, uh, the first place to cool cows is the, in, in the waiting yard. It, it's the most efficient uh, way to do it. All right. 
Um, again, my apologies if this is mispronounced, but Meta, um, can you specify which sprinklers you use, uh, flow per minute or hour? Well, uh, the, the idea is to have in, in a pressure of three uh, bars and, and more, uh, I need sprinklers that will uh, will spread uh, uh, large droplets, and uh, uh, this will be uh, uh, sprinklers with more than 300 liters per hour. All right, very well. Uh, I know you said that um, nutrition is not your area of expertise, but I need to ask this one anyway because it comes from Dr. Love. We don't get questions from Dr. Love very often. So does vitamin C make uh, – does it help with uh, heat stress in cows? I know that it helps me, but I'm not a cow. <laughs> I take 1,000 units of vitamin C every day uh, as, as vitamin C to cows. I, I, never, I never met this in the literature, I, I must confess. All right, very well. Um, all right, I'm going to go for one more question. This one comes from Guillermo. What would be the expected effects on implementing a cooling system in two uh, milking times versus three milking times in terms of milk response? Well, in Israel, uh, we we uh, <clears throat> we evaluated two and three milking uh, uh, sessions per day. The difference was ranged between ten to fifteen percent uh, more milk in the uh, with the third uh, milking session. From from cow cooling point of view, uh, it, it doesn't matter if, if you cool the cows uh, while milking or, or between milking sessions. So if you if you give cows uh, the recommended uh, cumulative time, uh, uh, the, 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 there is no any advantage for the third milking. But in general, it's 10 to 15 percent more. All right. Thank you very much. That's going to do it today. Obviously, this was a, a popular webinar, as evidenced by the many, many questions that we've had. Uh, we didn't get to all of them, um, so I'll, I'll put another uh, commercial out there for the podcast. We'll try to answer the, the remaining questions in the podcast. So with that, thank you, Dr. Flammenbaum, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. If you have additional questions, please submit them to anh.marketing at balchem.com. The Real Science Lecture Series of webinars continues next week, March 8th. Dr. T.J. Um, Gatos from Gatos Technology Services will review um, out to effectively, how to effectively manage poultry coccidiosis in antibiotic-free production situations. Visit balchem.com slash real science for more details and to register. Balchem's podcast series continues to offer a deeper dive into our webinar topics. Log on to your favorite podcast platform or visit balchem.com slash podcast. Subscribe to the Real Science Exchange and send us a screenshot along with your address and t-shirt size, and we'll send you a really cool Real Science Exchange t-shirt. And with that, on behalf of Balcam and Dr. Flammenbaum, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thank you for inviting much. me. You're very welcome.